Good morning, St. Luke, and welcome to our worship service uh, today from Bigger Staff Retreat Center on Lake Kiowe. I'm actually recording this video. Many of you will already be able to identify it. This is Yellow Branch Falls up in Walhalla. Coming to you from this remote place as it matches the kind of feel for today's message from chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. We've been studying Revelation quite some time. Today, though, we encounter things that feel so foreign to our everyday life, things which feel so remote, so different, so detached. Sometimes it's good to be detached. Sometimes it's good to be in the wilderness, away from things, journeying elsewhere. Uh, and then in, in today's text, we learn of things that are so detached, so different from the way of God, so different from God's plan that it's a part of the plan of evil. It's a part of the plan uh, that evil has in store for us. So today we have the choice to align ourselves with God's plan, with God's way, and with God's way forward, together as a community of faith, abiding by the way of Jesus. I invite you uh, to tune in to today as, uh, as we join together in today's service. Lakeside at Bigger Staff, thanks for being here today. It's good to see all of you here. We got a pretty good crowd out here today. It's nice here at the lake, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, very, yeah, a little bit hot. So, yeah, okay, well, uh, we're going to get started um, with uh, just a few announcements that I want to share with you together. We do have some inserts in your bulletins. So, these inserts are going to help you with singing songs today. Uh, so they match with what we're singing. Look for the insert that matches the song we're singing and you can sing along with us. Next week, we'll be back to our fairly normal schedule at church. So we'll have our 902 service and our 11 o'clock service next Sunday at the church. I know some of you may want to gather here again, but we're going to do it at the church next week. So, uh, so And next week will be our uh, Blessing of the Backpack Sunday. Um, so if uh, you have materials for school that you'd like to donate to our local elementary schools, you can bring those next Sunday, put them on the altar, we'll bless them, and then send them off to our local elementary schools uh, after next Sunday. So I think that's all the announcements that I wanted to share with you today. Does anybody else have an announcement that they want to share? I will just say, if you didn't notice, that uh, we got Alan here today. So Alan is with us. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, you want to come share words of wisdom? Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 you know, just, I, you know, just want to say that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just thankful and, and, and grateful to, you know, to be amongst, you know, the, uh, the brethren and the brothers and sisters. And yeah. One more time. It's, it's been about a year and a half since I've actually been with you all, and it's been a year since I've been on my journey. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted just to say thank you all for all of your, uh, you know, your thoughts and prayer, prayers and words of encouragement and, and all. And, and I'm just, you know, just great, just grateful and thankful. And just, um, I'm, I'm just praise God that I'm here. We, could, we continue to pray for you, Alan, and, and we're glad to be able to see you today. All right, uh, well, we're going to get started with worship together now. Um, I'm going to invite the worship band up, and we are going to all stand together and sing a medley of songs. I feel like you're going to know uh, Majesty and also Sanctuary, uh, and so you're invited to stand as we sing this one together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus, your glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom of authority, flow from his throne. singing with us. You can be seated. I am going to lead us now in an opening prayer and then we're going to um, then we're going to sing another song together in just a minute. So let's uh, let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather uh, in this place with this people for the purpose of worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray that you would bless our gathering this morning. Thank you for this beautiful setting uh, that, that we've been able to enjoy together today. Thank you for uh, the, the, that we're going to be able to share some food later, some fellowship later. Lord, we just pray that you would bless our, our time, bless our afternoon, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing another song together. This one is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Uh, it is uh, another insert in your bulletin, and so we'll sing this one together now. You can stand again. You can stand again. <laughs> Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Let's join together in affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. We will proclaim our faith to God in the context of one another as uh, we use this creed as our guide. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He arose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before you're seated, why don't you turn and greet one another in the Spirit of Jesus this morning. Okay, my friends, okay. So, I, there will be plenty of time for us to fellowship a little bit later, too. Uh, I did want to give us a sneak peek, I guess, just now with that. So, uh, we, we have the pleasure and honor of having Elizabeth Gibson here with us today. And so, she's going to share some special music uh, for us now. Thank you.
<clears throat> Just want to say a word of thanks to Elizabeth and to John on that beautiful song. This time, I want to invite all the kids uh, who are here to come up to the front with Miss Janie. Uh, we're going to do a shoot. How are y'all doing? So, we are out here at the lake today, right? It is so beautiful out here. She was singing that song, and all I can think about was, you know, she was talking about the storms. And you know what? What happened yesterday? Do you guys know what happened? Oh, oh my goodness. It was a rocking and a rolling. What do you think that water was doing last night? It was go. It maybe in some areas, maybe so. But I bet you it was all crazy. It was like rocky, right? If you were out on that boat last night, you would have been all over the place. But today, like if you look out there, it's so. No, a boat just came through. But it was, it's so calm. It's so beautiful out here. So let's go back to what you guys were talking about. Let's think about power. So last night we lost power. Did you? You didn't. No. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> you didn't lose power. What? About, Charlie, you lost power. Did you lose power last night? Um, well, Paul fixed it. Just Paul a little. Paul fixed it. Oh, the Paul fixed it. <laughs> Paul fixed it. Good, good. Paul to the rescue. Good job. Good job. <laughs> we should have come to y'all's house because we were. It was a little hot at our house. It was a little hot last night. But I was watching a while ago. I saw there was this boat and it was pulling a tube. It probably had a kid on there. Maybe it was a parent. But, you know, typically the children like to get on the back and the driver likes to take them all over the place and throw them off, right? Well, guess what? Did you Serpentine. Know? Serpentine, that's what we call it, right? But I was watching one of the tubes out there and the boat was pulling it along. And I was thinking, you know, that's kind of like, it's kind of like Jesus. That, that boat is that power. And um, um, that boat is like that power and that boat is like God. You know, without God, you know, we're kind of, we stay still. Yeah, we float a little bit. But when we're hooked and we're anchored into Jesus, God directs our path, right? He takes us where we need to go. And so I want you guys to think about that today, okay? Letting God be the captain of your boat and letting God lead you where you should go. And even though we have these rocky waves that come in sometimes and we have these storms that come in, you know, they're going to pass, and you're going to have just a nice calm that's going to come. You just got to hold yeah, on. Yeah, like today. You just got to hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like today. Just like today. The clouds are clearing up, so I think you're right. back on. You're right. It's very beautiful today. Does anyone want to pray today? Anybody? Uh, she, she work for? Okay. Thank you, God, for this day. Charlie, do you want to add to her prayer? Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us, and thank you for everything you will do for us. Thank you for everything that you have done to protect us. Thank you for worship time, and thank you for giving us the ability to live in love. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, we'll keep going. We'll keep them out here all day. All right. Oh. You guys can go back and sit with your, your person. So we are, uh, we are going to prepare for uh, taking up an offering. If you have gifts to give, I will invite you to do that. But before we do the offering, today is a really special day uh, because it's Al Cumbie's birthday. So we're going to sing. We're going to sing him happy birthday, okay? Look, look, I know how to do this, Susan. I know how to do this. Watch, watch. All right, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Al. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! Thank you for coming out. <laughs> All right.
I want to invite the worship band to come back up and we're going to sing another song. This one is called I Am Set Free and you all have this one in your set of uh, music as well. You can stand and sing with us. For singing with us, you can. All right, I'm going to share our scripture lesson for today. It's going to be tough for me to stay with this mic. I'm just telling you all up front, but I'm going to do my best because I feel like you guys could probably hear me better if I do. So uh, I'm going to read today from Revelation chapter 13. Uh, we're continuing our series in the book of Revelation. So for those who have been keeping up with us on that. Uh, You'll understand that we've been in Revelation pretty well through um, the last part of June and through July. So we're all the way up to chapter 13 of Revelation now. And I'm actually going to read all of chapter 13 for us today um, as, uh, as we read this together. I'm going to start actually with 12, 18 and then go into, go into 13. This is interesting. So before I read, we, we know about, as Christians, I think most of us know about uh, the, the idea of the mark of the beast. How many have ever heard about the mark of the beast before? Yeah, it's a pretty good show of hands. Uh, a lot of people. So what we actually discover in this scripture lesson today is that there's not just one beast, that there are two beasts that are both uh, in submission in submission to the serpent in the Garden of Eden. At the beginning of time, when Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden, that serpent which tricks them, tempts them into eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, even though God had told them not to, that serpent, is we've discovered already, has grown into a big dragon now, and he has a team. He has a team. Two on his team are who we're going to learn about today, the first and second beast. Listen for the word of the Lord as we consider this scripture passage together. Then the dragon took his stand on the sand of the seashore, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and on its horns were ten diadems, and on its heads were blasphemous names, and the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And the dragon gave it his power and his throne and great authority. I'm going to pause right there and, and just say that in the book of Ezekiel, 
we hear about similar names to a beast that is described in that apocryphal book as well. And in this case, the progression of that beast is the same kind of beast, but the progression of how it's revealed is in reverse. So here in Revelation, it's reversed as to how that progression is uh, revealed. I'm going to keep going. One of its heads seemed to have received a death blow, but its mortal wound had been healed. In amazement, the whole earth, all the people of the earth, followed the beast because they saw the death blow on the head and how it had been healed. And so they wondered in awe at what they were seeing. They worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? The beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming His name and His dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. It was given authority <clears throat> over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all the inhabitants of the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of, of life of the Lamb that was slaughtered. Let anyone who has an ear listen. If you are to be taken captive, into captivity you go. If you kill with the sword, with the sword you must be killed. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. If you heard nothing else today, I hope you heard the last part of the verse 10 there. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. All right, so that's the first beast. But that's not all John has to reveal to us. He's going to tell us now about a second beast. Listen to this. And then I saw another beast that rose out of the earth. So the first out of the sea, and this one <clears throat> out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, and it makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound had been healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in the sight of all, and by the signs that it is allowed to perform on behalf of the beast, it deceives the inhabitants of the earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could even speak and cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Also it causes all, both great and small, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell who does not have the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a person. Its number is 666. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. <coughs> Lord God, we pray that you would open our eyes to the meaning of this text for us today. Lead us, O oh God, as a community of faith to persevere with the saints as the saints that you have called. Although evil continues to increase and continues to abound in the world in which we live, we know, O oh God, that you have called us to, to purity as your people. And so, God, we look to you to show us the way. Open my mouth to speak your word today. Open our ears to hear and lead us to live out your way in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm pretty familiar with the language in this past passage of Scripture. In fact, today, I wasn't so sure if you wouldn't get to experience uh, the beast in me uh, as I got here. You know, how many of you are without power currently at home? Any of you suffering from that ailment like me right now? I am the only one. Oh, you guys. It's back on now. It's back on for y'all. You fix yours. You got the generator. We know about that. So you are without power over there. 
It's a struggle. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. Yeah, so we, uh, we went on a, a vacation. Many of y'all know this already. We went to Cozumel last week and, and got back a few days ago. Uh, and then we, we went on a, uh, an excursion yesterday to a family reunion. By the time we got back from the family reunion, we came home to discover the power was out at home. Uh, that's pretty problematic for me. I use the power all the time in ways that, you know, you probably don't even recognize. We just kind of take, take advantage, take it for granted that the power is going to always be on. Well, this morning, with the power off, my coffee maker was not working. You feel my pain a little bit. The, the coffee maker wasn't working. Sure, the shower wasn't great. <clears throat> Sure, I didn't have all the amenities that I usually have in the morning, like the refrigerator running and the microwave to use, but the main thing was I didn't have a coffee maker to, to burn a cup of coffee for me this morning to wake up. So, like I say, I can really relate to this passage about the beast rising up out of the sea or rising up out of the land. I can relate because I feel that. When I haven't had any coffee, I feel like I can be like the beast who is rising up out of the water. Today we learn about two different beasts in the book of Revelation that are both submitted to the serpent, both submitted to the dragon. So the greatest of all evil forces is this dragon who is Satan himself, according to the book of Revelation here. But see, here's this thing that Satan has done. He's built a trinity team of his own. He has created two beasts to join him in his evil powers, to match against the trinity in heaven, Father, Son, and Spirit. Satan, in this passage, has built a team of his own, a trinity of his own to match that power from on high. And so these two beasts, one from land, one from sea, are created in order to expound the power of evil, in order that the evil powers of this world would increase all the more. <clears throat> How does this relate to us? Well, it relates to us because we are the people of Jesus. We are the people of God. We identify with the Trinity from heaven. We identify with Father, Son, and Spirit. This challenges us because Satan and his two beasts are at work to counter the power of God, which means that Satan's dream team is at work directly against us. How does this affect itself? In all kinds of ways in all kinds of ways. But we can name a few here today. It affects itself by perversing the truth. How do we know this? How do we know that evil perverses the truth? We know it from the story of Genesis 3. We know that's exactly what the serpent does with Adam and Eve. He takes what God states originally as truth and he bends it just a little bit so that Adam and Eve would see it as acceptable and that they would buy into his way instead of God's way. This happens with us all the time. In the life of the church too. In the life of the church too. We believe certain things in the life of the church such as Jesus Christ is Lord. Such as the Holy Spirit is here and with us. But then People can change what is stated as truth very gently, in, in very small ways, so that we can start calling Jesus a good teacher, but not Lord and Savior. We can say uh, the Holy Spirit is with God, but not here with us. We can say that Christianity is a, a, a way to salvation, but then we can say it's not the only way. These are the ways that, that our truth is softened. These are the ways that Satan or evil are at work in order to 
uh, change our minds, change our hearts, and change the church. So how do we respond against this? How do we respond in opposition to this way of evil? The secret is in the text itself. The text tells the saints exactly what we are to do. We as the saints are called to persevere in the truth and love of God no matter what comes. Now we talked about this a little bit in Revelation, uh, in our discussions of Revelation. There are some who, who, who think of Revelation through a lens of dispensationalism. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Where dispensationalism is this idea that, that God only does one thing at one time, okay? And so there are certain ages that have to come to completion, and then God starts something else. And so a whole way of reading the book of Revelation is dreamed up through this, uh, this uh, lens of dispensationalism. In our text today, what we are seeing is, is, is not certainly a story that, that's going to happen just in the future. This is something that is happening presently for us. We encounter evil. We encounter the powers of Satan. We encounter the powers of Satan's army every day in our lives. Satan, just like with Adam and Eve, swoops in to tempt us to choose self-centered choices instead of choices that give ourselves to others. God wants us to love all other people as fully as we love ourselves. Satan wants us to learn how to love ourselves fully until we forget how to love everyone else. This is the game that is being played over us right now between Satan and God. The spiritual warfare that is happening over us right now between Satan and God. We are affected by it. We are wrapped up in it. And each individual in, in this space gathered here today, we are powerless to have any control over it. All we can do is align ourselves with the victor. And so as I have already told you before, the message of the book of Revelation is, no matter what comes, Jesus wins. So who will you claim to be your Savior? Who will you claim to be your Lord? Who will you claim to be your Messiah? Many temptations will come your way to try and get you off track from your commitment to Jesus Christ. But every day when you wake up in the morning, choose again to commit to the one who has created you, the one who has saved you, and the one who will redeem you from all evil. You see, the good news today, my friends, is that even though evil exists, it will not win. It will not win against the great power of Jesus. Jesus, it looked like evil was going to win. It looked like evil was going to win. Jesus went to a cross. He died. He breathed His last. They buried Him in a tomb in the darkest of all darkness. But He did not stay in that darkness. Jesus continued to shine His light. He, can, he raised Himself up from the dead. He was resurrected from the grave. And so we have sure power in Jesus' name today. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank You that even though evil exists, it does not have the final say. It will not win the great fight, the great spiritual war between God and evil. Lord, we choose this day to align ourselves with You as our baptismal vows remind us in this community of faith. We walk away from all evil. We reject the evil powers of this world. And so as we hear the waves crashing into the bank of the lake today, and as we're reminded of Your power to wash us and cleanse us clean from all that we have been, from all of our impurities, from all the ways that we've accepted evil as our God in this world. Lord, we pray that You would cleanse us, that You would purify us, and Lord, that You would put us on the path toward fellowship 
and obedience to you. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Kumbaya is a cool hymn. Anybody know this hymn? Everybody knows Kumbaya, right? That's a good one. So in Kumbaya, we say <clears throat> something very specific, and I just want to make sure you know what it is that you're singing before you're, you're singing it. We actually sing in, in Kumbaya. We're actually inviting God to come by here. That's what you're saying. You're singing for God to come by here, to come and, and make an experience with you, make an experience with us. And so I invite you as we sing this final hymn together, uh, to sing, having known what you're singing today. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Someone's praying. singing. Someone singing Lord, Kumbaya. Someone singing Lord, Kumbaya. Someone singing Lord, Kumbaya. Oh Lord, Kumbaya. Let's pray Praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Kumbaya. Let us praise the Lord. Kumbaya. Let us praise the Lord. Kumbaya. Receive the blessings that are yours. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.